password. Okay, I guess recording was instant. Uh, hello, my name is Steve. Welcome to this week's growth call. Hello to everybody in here in the Zoom room. And I guess those of you watching on Zoom right now or on YouTube afterward, we have these growth calls every week at this time to discuss how the BISC network has been doing, to discuss current priorities for the project. Uh, for this call, feel free to post your comments in the Zoom live chat and we'll address those as we can. The agenda, you can find a link to the agenda on this week's issue, which I'll put in the chat right now. Mainly want to cover four items. One, the market update as always, which is pretty good this time. Uh, I want to talk about a, an update coming next week, the BISC software, and what that's going to be about. Uh, third, I want to talk about the protection mechanisms that we're looking to implement soon for BISC to help uh, onboard uh, new users to trade bigger amounts. And I also want to touch on very quickly the proposal making process. This protection mechanisms, uh, there's been a few users who've been wondering about the proposal process, if they can make a proposal, how they get feedback, and it's a very important part, I think, of how BISC works, and I think it's worth going, just spending a couple of minutes to talk about how that works and how people can be, come involved with that. So, um, oh, before we go into the agenda, I want to just mention uh, Bitcoin 2019 conference going on in uh, San Francisco at the end of June. I just finalized their, I guess, first session is going to be one with BISC. Uh, I'm going to be there uh, talking with Haley Lennon of Bitflyer and Tom Robin of Elliptic on the wonderful topic of regulation. It wasn't my first choice, but that's what they picked. So uh, we'll be there talking about that. So if you're in the area, if you can, or if you can be in the area, uh, it'd be great to, to have you there and possibly you know, meet you or, um, um, yeah, uh, should be a good time. It's a big event. I think they were saying it should be anywhere from 1,500 to 2,500 people. Um, so it's going to be a pretty good size event with a lot of notable people there as well. So that should be good. Uh, yeah, market update. I guess May has been, we're almost at the end of May. May has been a pretty good month. We are uh, by nominal Bitcoin volume, we're almost at a thousand Bitcoin for the month, which is very good for us. Uh, the best this year, except for April, which was a blockbuster year. So very good there. Uh, number of trades is also very strong, uh, over 1,700 trades in this month. Um, of course, USD volume is pretty high, but that's because of the spike in price, so it's not very meaningful. Um, yeah, daily average trades, 58 trades, also a very strong number. So mostly due to the Monero as usual, but uh, yeah, I'm sure the other currencies, fiat currencies are a bit depressed right now because of the measures we have in place. But uh, hopefully that goes away soon. Um, any, I don't know, anything else to, to add there? Um, no, no, um, you said everything already. Most yeah. of, the, of our traffic volume comes from, from Monero. And regarding the US dollar volume, you quickly mentioned, of course, it's not, uh, yeah, it, it, it goes up and down with the price. So it's not so, so important number, but still, it's our highest US dollar volume ever. So I think we might end around 8 million uh, in total trading volume, which is also really, really nice to see on the long run. Yeah, 8 million. We're probably going to hit four digits on the Bitcoin volume. I think we'll easily, we'll hit 1,000 Bitcoin this month as well. So that'll be good to see. On the fiat side, I mean, I can tell you for the US dollar, the selling offers is, is uh, way lower than it usually is. Uh, we have over 20 offers for buying and we have like four offers for for selling which is much less than it usually is so um that's that um yeah cool so for uh next item the update so we're gonna we're looking to release a, an update 1.1.2 for yep. uh for bisque next week um i guess uh, among the updates we're looking to do uh uh I guess the, the updates on the databases. So the, the DAO 
has a database uh, for DAO updates. There's other databases for payment accounts and whatnot. Um, and when you first start up Fisk, uh, these, these databases can take a while to update if they haven't been updated in a while. So this update should help with that. Um, and then uh, I guess another notable change is an update to Bitcoin J to the 0 0.15.1 version. Um, I don't know, any, any, anything else to add there? I don't know. Um, yeah, besides that we update um, all our databases that are included in the client, um, there should be also changes in there um, which, which should uh, fix some issues with the DAO syncing oh, yeah. startup. So that should help there as well. Uh, if you have a, um, just a shout out, if you have a developer background um, and you want to help us testing this new release, uh, please uh, join us on Slack um, in the testing channel or dev channel. Uh, yeah, and we'll guide you from there. Yeah, the only precondition you have to be able to build uh, from source, and yeah, yeah, definitely. If, yeah, but if everything goes fine, um, we are aiming for let's say mid of next week, so around Wednesday. Okay, cool. Very good. And I guess before we get to protection mechanisms, I'd like to talk about the proposal process real quickly. Um, so like I said, a few people were asking about this. Uh, proposals are, they're intended to be for significant changes to BISC itself or the way the project does things. So they're, they're relatively significant on their own. I would say they're a bit different from your typical repository on elsewhere in BISC or elsewhere on, on GitHub or otherwise, uh, where you can open an issue for, you know, almost anything and it's 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 um you know it's it's a reasonable thing to do whether it's a minor thing or a more major thing that issue that you're having um in the proposals repository i would say most or all issues are very they're they're regarded significantly they're meant to propose a significant change to the way bisc does something or handle something and the proposal itself should be uh i think it's fair to say well thought out thoroughly uh, articulated and um, yeah so smaller changes I think usually are is most reasonable to put them through on slack or elsewhere on github or on a call like this or uh, another forum the forum itself um, but a more significant issue make a proposal think it out think it out as, as thoroughly as you can write it out in a you know uh, a well thought out way that's easy for people to understand and then um, one more thing I think that's worth noting is that a proposal is the proposal makers responsibility to uh, in a sense market or to get out there to encourage other people to provide feedback um, I mean no one's gonna do it for you uh, so if you really feel strongly about something and you took the time to write out the proposal then uh, make sure you also take the time to, um, to make sure that people in the project, users and other people know about it and can react to it as well. So um, yeah, and for those of you guys responding to proposals or wanting to respond to proposals, um, it's I think preferable if you do it in the proposal thread itself on GitHub. We had a few people on, on Slack and it's fine if you wanna, if you don't wanna comment in the thread for whatever reason, but I think it's most, productive if all the comments and feedback and perspectives go on the thread so people can can see them all in one place and make a better decision um, when a decision has to be made. So that's a little bit of color on that process. I think there was also a little bit of uh, confusion over how proposals made on GitHub relate to proposals made in the DAO, um, which is, I think something will feel out over time. Um, my hunch and folks, you know, Christoph or others, feel free to jump in. My my hunch is that will that it's best, at least for now, to to make a proposal on GitHub first and get feedback and feel out, like get a consensus of what people think. Um, and then once you have gotten a consensus or some kind of uh, uh, more concrete terms of what you wanna what you want the output to be or the result to be, then go ahead and make the proposal on on um, in, the, in the BISC DAO. Because the DAO has a kind of a, uh, a finality to it. Once you make a proposal there, that's that's it. If you want to change a parameter by 0.1, you can't do that. You'll have to make a new proposal. So it's better to just finalize that beforehand and then make the formal proposal in the DAO 
when you're ready. So, yeah, that's what I want to say about that. Um, and the reason I wanted to bring it up was that the proposals have been seeing a lot of activity over the past several weeks. We've had several proposals made to, um, to handle or to somehow figure out how to implement protection mechanisms on BISC. We've had, I don't know, five, I haven't counted, but probably between five and 10 proposals just for that. Um, the main one under consideration right now is proposal number 93 to implement a two-factor verification method or mechanism for new users who want to trade or who want to buy a meaningful amount of Bitcoin on BISC. And so we've had calls. We had a call on, two, on, on Monday uh, for feedback, a call for feedback from the community and from users. And on Tuesday, we had another call with uh, developers to talk about the feasibility of implementing these, these measures. And it seems like we are slowly getting more uh, concrete uh, of an idea of how this is going to work. The basic idea is that we're going to require buyers who want to make their first notable buy with uh, two financial accounts. So the idea here is that if you have control of a bank account and either another bank account or a, um, you know, for example, a, a money order that you can walk in and make with cash and then, um, you know, prove your identity at the counter or some other KYC payment method. If you can successfully carry out two of those um, and not have a chargeback on either of those payment methods over a period of two or three weeks, I'm not sure what the exact ultimate time frame is going to be. Um, but if you can do that, then the seller can be reasonably confident that you are who you say you are and that you actually own the accounts that you uh, have used to make the payment and that a chargeback is not going to occur and that you can be trusted um, with a fairly high degree of, of certainty. So I know some people were not too happy about the second bank account. Um, as I just mentioned, it may not be necessary. You could just use one bank account and then a another KYC uh, method like a money order. Um, it, may be, it may be that we add other verification methods in the future that don't require a second financial account or any financial accounts at all. We'll have to see how that, how that plays out. Um, but uh, yeah, I think, I think I'm accurate in saying that we have the basic signing process for the mechanism mostly done. Uh, it seems like there's mostly UI work left from what I've been told. And we're going to be, I think, leaving out the peer-to-peer -peer chat bit for now. So uh, hopefully there isn't too much. I mean, the UI work is probably not going to, it's probably going to be a challenge. Uh, but hopefully there isn't too much to do. Yeah, we have, we have to see. Um, there's also, there were also discussions, I'm, I'm not sure if they're already on, 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 on GitHub as well. Mm -hmm. uh, that besides this, this second um, factor uh, authentication, so when you, you pay, um, you buy the Bitcoin uh, over two bank accounts, that there might be also the option just to, to pay through one payment account. If you yeah. uh, pay, pay a, a verified um, account owner and um, he signs your payment account, then uh, it, it might, uh, we might also as a disable the limits after a certain time, after, after the, 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 the trade uh, aged um, a couple of weeks, uh, so that, and then you, you have your limits uh, revoked as well. Otherwise, for example, but that's still on, on discussion, um, with, if we have this two-factor authentication, we could also think about um, if we uh, release uh, the, the limits immediately. Because if you are able to, to manage to to capture or to, to steal two accounts, that that might be the only case where we have a problem. But I'm not sure how, how high the risk is there. Because yeah, if, if, you, if you own both uh, accounts, yeah, then hopefully it shouldn't be any chargeback issue. Yeah. Or do you think it's, it's still too, too, it might be too risky and, and we need this, this delay in, in both cases? For just a single account? Um, no, also for the, the two-account, uh, two-factor kind of authentication. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, you, you might be able to get away with uh, not having a delay for, for two accounts. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I'm just, I was uh, shooting that in. But yeah, uh, yeah. but in general, um, um, most of the domain uh, code, uh, uh, the signing and the verification part should be already done. Um, um, so it, it will be, of course, it's not only UI work, there's some, some, some communication, especially if we have now this um, two, if you have this um, two fact authentication and the, the no two fact authentication so that it works seamlessly and also backwards compatible. Um, but yeah, hopefully, yeah, we, we, we can, we can, re yeah, I guess uh, we should have something in um, after the 1.12 release, so the following release. Um, yeah, I'm not sure when it will happen, maybe uh, end of June, beginning of July, depending, um, yeah, we will see uh, during development if it's getting, uh, it, it's more complicated than we thought so. But yeah, if it if it runs smoothly, we should have something available for everyone uh, beginning of July, hopefully. Cool. Yeah, sounds good. Um, yeah, and as always, um, you know, if you have any comments or suggestions, please feel free to to let us know. This is something that, as you can tell, we're still kind of thinking about, and we, 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 I like to think we're getting more certainty now, but we still have some open open items for for left to determine. So. Could certainly use feedback wherever you guys have it. Uh, just one more thing regarding the proposals. Uh, I had some connection issues, so I'm not sure if you mentioned it already. Oh, yeah. So um, the marketing of your own proposal is very important, but also, of course, uh, it, uh, you have to to convince. So if it's if it's something that needs to get uh, get uh, developed, then you also need to kind of uh, convince developers to or hire developers to implement th yeah. this these ideas because that's we, we, developer resources are always scarce, and yeah, uh, if you if you have developers at hand, uh, then probably your proposal is is will will get faster implemented than if you have to wait and, and queue up for because we we do have lots of uh, very uh, interesting proposals and ideas that uh, are ready for, uh, to get implemented. So it's a kind of a competition. But yeah, if you come up with some additional developer resources, you maybe jump the the line <laughs> because you are you are not just writing the concept but you're also uh, implementing it yeah yeah that's a good that's point thing. yeah so and, and uh, yeah sorry and, and one more thing uh regarding the the proposals um having it on on github on and in the dao for, for me personally it was also not on still it's not so 100 percent clear when we just do the, the voting uh, on GitHub and then just decide and it's impl implemented and when we put something um, within the DAO for voting, I think we had the, when we had the discussion, it was about yeah if, if there's some uh, different, if, if it's not so clear, if there's a consensus that we put it for a vote. Uh, but still, even if, it's, if there's consens consensus, there is the consensus of Everyone who is active on GitHub, I'm not, probably not the majority of the stakeholders. So, um, but I think, as you said, we, we might find out the, the right balance if we have to move everything to the DAO, which of course is also slows it down the process a little bit. Uh, but yeah, I think it's it's as always. Yeah, we'll we'll have just to figure it out what's best. Yeah, it's it's at your discretion, I guess. Right now, what's what's most appropriate. And what makes sense? Um, yeah, I just want to prevent that we have that people are saying, yeah, uh, now we have the the, the DAO uh, to 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 guide and 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 steer the the <laughs> the project, and then everything is decided on GitHub by voting thumbs yeah, up. <laughs> besides true. the DAO. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's important. Yeah. All right. Um, so that's all I have on the uh, for the agenda. Anything else anyone wants to cover? Um, just there, just to mention two proposals, I think um, for the next, uh, which will be up for voting in the next uh, cycle. There's the one the increase. There might be a, a, um, a proposal for, to increase the minimum um, um, volume, uh, the trading volume, if you ha haven't uh, lifted. Uh, 
if you have uh, don't have kind of uh, verified your account i think it at the moment it's 0 0.01 bitcoin and the um, proposal is to increase it to 0 0.02 bitcoin and the other proposal is um, to um, reduce the the um, discount uh, if you pay with bsq because at the moment also because of the price fluctu fluctuation i think uh, sq uh, calculated some at the moment it's around 94 percent so it's even more mm -hmm. than we anticipated so we um, are planning so there's a proposal to reduce it to 80 percent so if you have an opinion on that and uh, don't don't forget to vote for or against on the ne next voting cycle yep cool yeah that's all yeah sorry <laughs> okay yeah, yeah yeah that's good okay um anyone else so we have a couple two other people on the call i don't recognize you guys by name but if you if you have anything you'd like to bring up please feel free all right all right well if that's it then thank you everybody for joining and we'll see you back here again next week bye bye, -bye.